It's part of High Tech Motorsport, Elk River, Minnesota, 763-712-9088. More in the beginner series, um, novice series or starting out series, if you will. Um, of course, well, the first thing we did was talk about drag racing and then Mason had a question about boost. What is boost? Superchargers, turbos, I'm going to throw nitrous oxide in here also. All three of those are just basically force feeding an engine. An engine's just an air pump. The more air you can put in it, the more power comes out until it blows the pistons and everything right in the ground. So let's go over this gently now and see what goes on. I'll try to explain it here. Supercharger is what we do a lot of here at High Tech Motorsport because longevity is real good. They make all kinds of torque. Uh, they're easy to install. Um, I like nice square motors, 500 horse, 500 foot pounds at the wheels, that type of thing. We happen to do what they call a screw charger, and that's what's on this 67 Camaro that we had on here before. This is an Edelbrock E-Force. It's a 2.3 liter blower, and the reason I say it's 2.3 liters is that's how much air is cut by the rotors with one revolution. Now the way they work, those rotors inside the case have Teflon edges on it, and they end up sucking air, cupping it, and pushing it straight down they spin at fairly high speed. Not as high as turbos or belt driven superchargers we'll talk about next. We've got one of those here. But all it does, it runs off of the crank pulley. So the crank pulley in this thing is like seven inches and this has got a 2.75. So the step up ratio is whatever the hell that is, two and some change each. And so every time this thing pulls in air, it just blows it down the motor. Pretty simple stuff. This is 415 cubic inches. There's a basic formula for boost. Now boost is just a restriction. Do not get hung up on boost. Some guy says, I'm running 40 pounds of boost. Great. He's got a two liter motor and the ports are this big. So the guys that are running big supercharged stuff with my big Hemi motor that I had, I had a 528 Hemi with a 1471 blower. That's the old school. This is the new school. It's the same ones that they still run today on top fuel and big alcohol cars where they blow the bodies off and stuff. And I was only running 10 pounds of boost on my 528, yet it made 2,500 horse. And that's because boost is a restriction. The ports on my car, you can put a tennis ball through. That's how big those things were on the big Hemi motor. So don't get hung up on boost. Very simple formula for anybody doing boost to figure out what the car is going to make. Here we go. If you take the amount of horsepower that any engine will make, naturally aspirated, no boost, no nitrous, no turbo, no supercharger, nothing. Let's say it's gonna make 300 horse. If you run a uh, full atmosphere is 14.7. 15 is easier to figure, but let's go 14.7 to 15. Half an atmosphere will make half again as much horsepower unless there's a restriction somewhere that's screwing you up. So if you have a 300 horse motor, and you've got seven and a half pounds of boost. You just added 150 horsepower, now it makes 450. If you take the same engine and you run a full atmosphere 14.7, now your 300 horse motor makes double, thinks it's twice as big, and goes 600 horse. Now, that's true for any kind of force induction. Doesn't matter if it's turbo, supercharger, whatever. These, with this one right here, this runs off the crank and has the two rotors. They're called a screw charger. They're simple and they work great. Don't have a lot of problems with longevity. They are a little expensive, but they're my favorite go-to thing because my customers want to just have something that works all the time. You change the boost by changing the upper pulley or the lower pulley, just like riding a bike. Change the gearing on it, all right? Now, the next thing we've got we'll talk about is we'll talk about the, I call them sidewinder blowers. They're a belt driven turbocharger per se. They look like a snail. I only have one of those in here now because the head unit is out being repaired because it went bad again. Now it's a Vortec and it's on this little Mustang. I'll show you this. Now 
No, I'll have Mason dig up a picture, a photo file from ProCharger, ATI ProCharger, or Vortec. Anyway, this little snail thing sits right here. It's off being repaired, and this goes down, cold air intake, and then force feeds it. There's an intercooler up front that's hidden behind the grill. You have to do that because when you compress air, it gets hot. So you need it to expand and cool down, otherwise you have detonation issues. That's something to worry about on these things. So this is belt driven also, and these ATI Pro Chargers Vortex, they have an internal step up ratio. So every time the pulley goes around on the top, it actually goes up anywhere between 3.5 and 5.4 times top. Of it. Now this has got just one vein in it, kind of like a turbo, but it's belt driven. So nice. Don't think of yourself as clumsy. Think of yourself as clumsy. Anyway, the belt driven turbos have kind of an intrinsic issue. They make great power up high, but they need to spool up to get there. So they need to be at 4,000 RPM, 3,500 minimum to keep it, to make power. I don't use them because all of my customers that show up, they really want a big block, 560 cubic inch motor, but they only have a 346 small block Chevy or LS1, whatever. And they don't make any more torque down low. They actually slow it down with torque when you're driving it down at lower RPMs because you got a seven inch pulley on the bottom, you have a three and a half on the top with a step up ratio, that's two to one, and the internal one. So these routinely spin 60,000 RPM at full song, whereas the ones, the screw charges that cup air and push it down are sealed up, will spin 15,000, give or take a little bit. These things have a problem with bending brackets because you're leaning on them for every revolution down here, you're spinning seven and a half or eight on top. So I like to bend brackets, take off belts, and they're okay for a car that's gonna be road racing or running at a high stupid speed. And <clears throat> the problem is longevity seems to have a problem because 60,000 RPM is always tough on stuff, even with good oiling, and they usually go 15,000, 20,000 miles before they have to come out and be fixed. So then the other thing that's available for forced induction is turbocharging. Now turbochargers, if you've ever seen that before, they are just, I think I got one up front. We'll have to look and see if I can get you something there. But it's just got a hot side and a cold side. Simple stuff. The exhaust as it goes through on the hot side, spools up an impeller on the other side. So the RPM from the exhaust, which is hotter and it expands, makes the intake push air through it. Now they have a problem with heat. <clears throat> it's a lot of plumbing. They make great power and they can make great torque. But you gotta have a constant oil feed line to them, whereas these other two are mostly self-contained. So you've gotta punch a hole to get oil pressure and you've gotta have a scavenge pump in most cases to throw it back down inside. And if it ever cokes up the oil, burns the oil because it gets too hot, the bearings go out, parts go flying through. There's all kinds of stuff that goes on. Um, turbos are kind of all the rage right now. Everybody thinks it's free horsepower. It's really not because you're capping off the exhaust. There's, um, there's parasitic loss, residual loss in the, in the turbocharger also. Those are the three majors uh, with supercharging and turbocharging. Now, the final thing for some kind of an adder is nitrous oxide. Now, N2O, all it does, it comes out of the bottle. It's a liquid in the bottle, and all it does is it enhances the ability for the engine to burn more fuel. At 33% oxygen, that's we're 21% in the atmosphere is 33%. So you add fuel with the nitrous. If you do that, it's called a wet system. Fuel and nitrous add it at the same time and you tune it to be, make more power. It fills up the cylinders. It's very cold when it comes out of liquid form. It's 90 or 100 below zero. So it also helps to make more power because cold air makes more power. So that simplicity, there's also another system called a dry shot, and that's when it doesn't add fuel. It goes before the air temperature sensor, and the air temperature sensor with fuel injection just adds more fuel to it because it reads, oh, it's really cold now. So being 80 degrees, it reads 10 degrees. So it adds fuel that way, and you can tune that in the computer. Most guys run a dry shot on fuel injection. I don't know anybody running a dry shot very well on the carburetor type setup because all it does is runs lean. And when you tune up a 
We'll go into fuel injection mapping later on, but it's when you add a bunch of nitrous to it, you're making the engine feel bigger because you're filling the cylinder with liquid that's cold and also lots of oxygen. So when it ignites, it breaks into its uh, nitrogen and oxygen components and allows you to burn more fuel. You have to take timing out, a couple three degrees for every 100 horsepower. Uh, I don't like big nitrous hits because they do have controllers, but when they hit hard, they're a lot of fun. It's like a cartoon ride, but they can also break stuff if they're not set up correctly. It gets a bad rap because people think they know what they're doing with nitrous oxide and they'll blow stuff up. So that's the three things there. So we went over the boost, which is just a restriction, air pressure, turbochargers, turbochargers, nitrous oxide, and superchargers, both screw chargers and um, these little sidewinder blowers, centrifugal blowers, they call them. And that's what we do. So if you've got any other questions, you can contact Mason. Um, he'll put a number up on the screen or Instagram or I don't know, or you can call me 763-712-9088. We'll continue to refine these and go over new things, but he wants to get his feet wet with doing some, uh, putting some stuff up on the, on the web for you guys to watch. A little uh, easier to understand. We'll get a bigger audience in here. So if you need to get a hold of me, you know where I'm at six days a week, feel free to call. This is Bart, High Tech, signing off.